What's up, guys? I'm Kevin. This is Entertaining Entropy. And today, I'm talking to a guy who created my favorite NFT project, honestly, DeFi Land. If you haven't heard, it's a play-to-earn farming-style NFT cryptocurrency game where you got farming animals, farming tools, farms, crops, and you can actually earn cryptocurrency while you're playing, which is pretty sweet. But I wanted to hear more about Erwin's journey, how he got to where he is, where he came up with the idea, maybe some advice he'd give to his past self, what were some big things that happened along the way. Uh, he's hit $4 billion with this project. Talk to Katy Perry, Jason Derulo. Check out the story. I really enjoyed making this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed as well. Have a great day. Awesome. So. Thank you so much, Erwin, for taking the time uh, to join me today. I'm Kevin with Entertaining Entropy. And uh, with me today, Erwin from DeFi Land uh, agreed to answer a couple of questions, uh, a little bit about the project. So we'll start by kind of introducing the project for anybody that might not be familiar with it. Uh, but then also going through just a little bit of kind of how Erwin got to where he is today. Been around now, uh, for those who aren't familiar, two years. Is that right? Officially, like, uh, you're in two months ago. So, like... As, as an idea, as a kind of team kind of forming up, I, I somewhat like two years already. And, and actually shares the same birthday as me, I recently found out. <laughs> um, and just because we jumped into this, DeFi Land is a play to earn game. It uses NFTs, but with cryptocurrency functions, it's, you know, le leveraging the Solana blockchain to, you know, allow you to feed animals, have a virtual farm, have crops. Uh, and, and play games to actually earn money and uh, upgrade your stuff and, and a lot of uh, aspirations for the future. This technology is, you know, it's, it's new, right? Cryptocurrencies haven't been around for a long time. Um, and so I can already bust you right now, Erwin. I said, I, I know you haven't always done NFTs. Uh, what, what would you want to be when you were growing up? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I, I was shifting my, my desires like a lot. Like I, I've been going for it. At, at first I was, I was going to be tethered at, at the bank. I'm not sure why, but I, I was going for that like for for several years. Mm -hmm. Most uh, of the money. <laughs> I just like the money, I guess. And then like I wanted to be just a businessman, like just just the business, like no no in the, in the industry, no specifics, just the businessman, I guess. Then I decided that I wanted to just do some kind of the esports. I wanted to be an esports player, like the League of Legends oh, and, yeah. or just sure. the, the Counter Strike and stuff. <laughs> Uh, and then I decided that I wanted to be the the, 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 the programmer, I guess, like the the, the, the software engineer or something like that. Yeah. And then at at, uh, at the university, I understood that I, like I I mostly I'm pretty good at the leveraging, okay, the using the knowledge I have on the business side as well as on the tech, tech side, and just kind of combining those two and becoming the bridge between the tech guys and the business guys. And basically, the being the guy who actually kind of knows both and kind of understands both and kind of can drive those uh, the company uh, direction and kind of can lead some stuff really well. So yeah, I decided that uh, I, I was fit for that position, and then I worked at several different positions. Uh, so yeah, I turned out to be that from the bank teller to the to this uh, position, I guess. Oh wow! Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, from the side of the customer, the consumer of playing the games to the wanting to actually create them, but always kind of that finance, you know, backing. Uh, were there a lot of non-crypto games that influenced you building DeFi Land specifically? You said League of Legends and those types of things were ones that you played. Were any of them sort of the ones that inspired uh, you to creating DeFi Land? Yeah, actually, like, I've been playing games since early early childhood, I guess. But uh, uh, like I play like League of Legends, like a lot of different other big games that uh, always has been fun. But uh, I cannot say that it was an inspiration for Default Land. But like I always were was thinking that uh, building a game it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, and like it's a kind of pretty awesome experience. And I have never done that before, like as a huge game. So I have done like several small games on the VR and AR and stuff. So I wanted to actually also try to build the game. And the farming kind of theme came there from the farm well and uh, heyday and oh, heyday, uh, yeah. like those kind of games. And also the uh, Stardew Valley and like all those kind of farming activities like were pretty pretty fun for me. So I decided that combining that with the crypto would be would be also fun for other people as well. Oh, for sure. Uh, and I mean, at what point did you ultimately decide to do NFTs? Was there something that, you know, you saw NFTs, you know, as uh, you know, that your friends were doing it and you and you were like, this is the, this is it. This is the technology I need to run with. Or, you know, was there a moment uh, that there was a change? Yeah, actually, I've been in crypto for five years already. And uh, at the beginning, I was just trading the shit coins, to be honest. And then I got pretty 
cut cut off guard, and I, I got like all, all of my money. It, uh, and, uh, and I was at the university by by the time still, so I got kind of kind of caught off guard there, and I lost a lot of money. <laughs> but uh, so, uh, I decided that I would stay there and in this industry, and kind of look what it has to offer in the future. And like in 2020, in a DeFi summer, like NFTs as well, kind of started to come come uh, up. And I was all, always kind of wondering like. Why, why do people actually care about the monkey PNGs or why, why do actually people just buy all those weird stuff? And I tried to kind of learn more and research and um, in early 2021, I actually pretty much understood everything that I wanted to, wanted to know and I had an idea, I had the kind of all the missing missing blocks from the current ecosystem and the blockchain and everything so i said that the default and it was pretty perfect fit for the yeah. for the the nfts and the crypto so yeah uh, yeah that, that was the time when i when i kind of switched on and 20, i like 2020 DeFi summer was the time that uh kind of i'm uh, everything became clear to me hmm. yeah and, and 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 you kind of already answered this but what made you go with the farm theme as opposed to something else it was just a good meld of you saw the potential for utility, you know, with the board, a yacht club and all those being kind of uh, more visual, like, you know, art collecting and those types of things. You wanted to have uh, a meld of all these different things um, and utility. Is, is that kind of where the farming came from? Yeah, at the beginning, I didn't really think about this kind of farming as a game. Like, I really love the farming games, but I didn't really think that farming game is like super kind of huge thing and uh, it would be amazing. But like, the main idea was that like um, the cryptocurrencies uh, were like, to be honest, like the, the main idea was a soft uh, Solana was like the sunflower for me. And like, different kind of Bitcoin was called, uh, always was uh, called as a corn. And you know, all those stuff were pretty much familiar to the farm as well as the yield farming uh, and that was like the final piece that okay, so that I needed to kind of call this everything in the groups of the farm so mm -hmm. I thought that uh, abstracting all the different groups of stuff to the farming uh, assets would be really fun and it would be re it would make sense for a lot of people so yeah that's like why we went for the farming game yeah, yeah no, definitely a lot of uh, popular games already out there and a lot of uh, people that are already into this you know so you know i was very quickly drawn to it i play all those same games hey day farming simulators you know and all those um but if it wasn't a farm theme what would it have been instead is there was there a runner-up was there anything else that you thought um could have been a close second or that you were conflicted or was it always just yeah actually i had several ideas in the minimum team as well so the the other ideas that we had was like uh, some kind of um the like clash of class kind of style of game where mm. you build yeah Village. Farming, but you will build you, you build your own village and then you attack different people and you steal some crops and like that, that could be some kind of thing and another yeah. one was like uh, just a just a simple um kind of i'm not like age of fire kind of thing like uh where you kind of strategy game where you mm -hmm. kind of where you have to kind of gather a lot of things and to kind of improve your land and your resources yeah. uh, your yeah. uh, village and stuff but like uh, like the village was always the main theme, I guess. Like yeah. kind of Homestead. improving and yeah. creating your roots bigger and uh, building your empire, I guess. <laughs> no, definitely, yeah. I, I, I'm the same way. At, you know, building your homestead, your village. Um, and I mean, if if somebody was trying to begin their first NFT project, uh, what is the first step for somebody that's trying to get into it? Is there a, a class you can go to? You know, where do I sign up with Solana? Or you know, how how do I, what's my first step? Yeah, I, I believe like there are a lot of takes from different people who have different ideas about this. But like, uh, the one thing I would definitely recommend is to kind of understand what and for who are you creating the collection that you're trying to get. Like, do not just go there and just kind of launch the collection and like someone would buy that. Like, you should really have the idea. Like, who is your customer? Who gonna buy? Why? And like, what you, what's your plan? Like, what's your roadmap? Just don't throw like just. The basic like hey we're gonna build the nft marketplace we're gonna have launch our merch and like those just basic stuff just actually come up with the something that you really want to do that something that really inspires you and something that gets you going every single day and then uh you for sure need to have someone with a good technical understanding for sure like you might hire some developers you might hire some people but like having someone that you trust as a kind of tech guy 
it's really crucial if, if, it's, if it's not the you who is like uh, who understands everything like on attack uh, and then I, I would really recommend to just uh, just look at different kind of collections like that are on Solana or Ethereum or anywhere and then once you just look at that there are a lot of plenty of resources like how to launch your first NFT on the Metaplex or, or like a Sol C or like different platforms and then it's pretty much easy just the, 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 the first thing you need to really do is like to find like what you actually want to build who, for who and why and once you have that like it's everything on the tech side is gonna get easier as like um, building a launching an NFT collection is not as hard as like building your decentralized exchange right so uh, if you have like just idea to launch the NFT collections, then you can really easily just reach out to the Magic Kid and or just reach out to any other launch pad and stuff. And uh, you can just get started that way. Or also, if you have some questions, some specific questions, always feel free to kind of get in some communities. Like for example, if you get into sure. DeFi and you have some questions about the like the NFT, so how to do some stuff, we're gonna be also always answering and we'll be willing to kind of help you and guide some people as, as always. So uh, kind of getting in the community, kind of asking a lot of stuff uh, about what uh, whatever you were interested also is really helpful thing no, definitely the more i you know talk to the uh, moderators brooklyn and the folks and uh Ra in the dfl chat there i learned so much <laughs> he was talking about metaplex yesterday uh if i was somebody that wanted to learn to code crypto though it, it, can i go to solana is there a university is there a school or something that i can go to that to actually learn crypto uh yeah i believe like uh for the people like to be honest, like when we were getting started, we didn't really know like Solana or the crypto crypto coding, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, like blockchain developers. We were not really, but like if you have some basics and understanding of the, how the code works, how to write the software and so on, you can really easily understand like how blockchain also works. So uh, first of all, if someone is from their own knowledge trying to get into the crypto and who wants to become a developer, I would really recommend to first and kind of go through the basics of the programming, like the basics of the data and data structures and so on. So you just have to understand like how do like, how does the code work in general? And once you do that, once you have the understanding of that, I would really recommend to just uh, go through the uh, the courses that are, there are like uh, different kind of stuff on the on the Solana website as well. You can just go and just see like there are some quizzes, there are some um, uh, cookbooks. I guess it's called that way where you gonna sign up and then you're gonna get some even some prizes for completing some um, the development courses and also like going to the hacker houses and some different places where developers gather and kind of being around them, hanging around them and just uh, asking some stupid questions to them, that, that, that helps a lot. Like you have to ask a lot of questions to become a good developer, even like a lot of senior developers there are, are always asking the questions because like asking a question is the, the number one thing you should learn as a developer and it's, there is nothing you should be uh, afraid of in there. So uh, those kind of things I believe uh, are the good way and also if you have some questions some specific stuff you can al always get into some communities as i said already and just sure. ask some uh questions like how do i run this how do i compile this and so on and i believe like there will be a lot of people who would love to share the knowledge with you wow. if you're not asking questions you're not pushing the boundaries you're not doing anything new right <laughs> yep uh, what has been the biggest challenge when building an nft project yeah for us it's been a pretty pretty uh, long ride and uh, i believe it's been a roller coaster of the emotions like the the high, highs are really high and lows are really low so like mm -hmm. the people don't understand that in, in crypto everything goes changes so fast and like the you can be like on the top at the one day and then uh, at the at the bottom and another day and like you just gonna go from from bottom to the top all, all the time and <laughs> the vice versa but so the thing is that you should <laughs> always get used to that uh, the people gonna expect more like whatever you do, people can expect more. So you have you should try to learn how to manage the expectations. So if you hype too much, then they will be overhyped. And once you deliver, they're gonna be kind of um, shaming, I guess. Yeah, you. If you something. do not hype yeah. at all, then they <laughs> will be leaving your community. And you should find find a can try to find the perfect kind of balance between those two. And as well as like building uh, and kind of maintaining your health. Yeah, is pretty pretty uh, hard at, at the beginning like there are two types of people like who build like just several hours per day and they just do not really try hard and they always fail in the crypto because like the the competition here is super high and there are the people also who are building like 50 hours per day like stepping really like three hours per day and like do not working out not taking the walks outside and everything and also that that 
dim damages your health a lot. We also got burnt out a lot uh, in default and team. So it's really important to maintain your health uh, and begin a balance in your life where you have like the working time and also you have the leisure activity time as well because you might uh, think that working 15 hours per day would be amazing but like at some point your your uh, body becomes like stressed and it just like cannot do much more so your 15 hours could be equal to my nine hours for example so that's like uh the productivity is the key so always try to take the rest as well so i believe that's like two Huge. Yeah. hardest challenges think about yourself for, yeah. for everyone take care of yourself <laughs> don't get too uh, involved, I guess. Don't don't dive in too deep. You know, remember your body. <laughs> uh, has anything big happened, like good or bad, that you, that you didn't expect? Just like, you know, totally out of the blue, caught you off guard. Um, anything out of the ordinary? Yeah, I really like it. It's it's been like on both sides, like on on positive and negative sides. Like the first thing when I was getting started uh, was that like I randomly got introduced to the so there is like i didn't really expect to kind of jump on the call with jason derulo for example randomly i didn't really expect to kind of talk have a talk with the kelly perry like who wow. kelly perry investing crypto like what wow like just randomly talking to jake paul like just like why jake paul like I missed all this, this guy just <laughs> yeah like it's pretty pretty it was pretty weird and then i just Crazy. also kind of got connected to the amazing like the like i, I got the, connected to the ftx i got connected to the like the jump yeah like, the pretty the number wow. one funds out there i was actually we also had a deal with the binance and like it was pretty unexpected you just kind of get the all those stuff from zero in just uh, several months at, at getting at that point was pretty pretty weird and uh, really unexpected as well as like at some point the island was worth uh four billion dollars like that was like super weird like i would never ever think about that and this was like just happened like in a snap mm. so uh but on the <laughs> other side like a lot of things happened that um we didn't really expect like for example like there was like uh, some um liquidations happening sometimes that we didn't really expect like the unexpected uh kind of price drops sometimes there are sometimes like the exploits uh, that didn't really happen to us but like we have seen with other different projects that are just gonna your project goes from 100 to zero in just several seconds so there are a lot of different things that you cannot really expect but uh yeah like uh, for us the the worst thing that happened i guess was like just uh um this um uh, yeah price drop i guess uh, i would say but like the big thing was also the price upside so I believe it's like the roller coaster. You are gonna get used to it, and like whenever you get get used to it, like nothing kind of seems too huge. But uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be also always making sure that, that we get the higher highs all the time. So yeah, we're working and building for that for sure. <laughs> and if you fast forwarded ten years, what would DeFi land work look like in a in a perfect world? Yeah, actually, uh, I've been thinking about that recently. Uh, there are different milestone that we have set for the for example for the next year in 2023 2024 like 10 years is like the, the time that you can't really predict however the the way that we look at the default and, and the, the way it potentially goes that you you have the ecosystem like you have the the project that is not just us our developers were developing this project but you have like the open source code which everyone can use and they can build on top of default and metaverse like for example, you can imagine that there's a default and there are different kind of there's a world and like people can just build and use default and SDK and build their own mini games or their own uh, different kind of use cases through the default and then like you can visit their lands and use their uh, use cases and pay some fee for that. So like basically, we we want to have the creator creator economy running automatically like without much of the help on our side. So like we will be developing the game, but like there will be a lot of different creators who are going to be creating the games, economies and like mini economies in their own lands and stuff. So we could imagine like the Roblox on steroids, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, enabling people to build that sort of metaverse idea that you already have the, the marketplace that you plan to have other NFTs in from, from other projects and things like that. So just sort of the idea then is to have everybody enabled to be able to create projects, create other mini, mini games all overlaid on the DeFi land. Is that right? Yeah, like that's that's the thing. Like, uh, if you have noticed, like we, as you have mentioned, like we we are building a lot of different infrastructure ourselves, like NFT marketplace staking, like gamified NFT drops, and like a lot of different things. So that uh, once we have all the different infrastructure, then we can really open source all those stuff and tell the creators, like, hey guys, there is all you need. There is like not much stuff that you have to do from zero. So you can actually. <laughs> 
plug and build like whatever you want. So uh, that's, that's I believe going to be really <laughs> cool. So uh, we're we're getting ready for that. And what has to happen for DeFi land to feel like it achieved what you originally set out to do? Yeah, actually, we once we're getting started, we have set several kind of milestones, and like we actually like when we're getting started, we actually already achieved those, and like it was super unexpected like to achieve those in just several months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do like the several million fundraising, we did that. We wanted to have thousand daily active users, we did that. Then we actually wanted to have like uh, 100 million FTV, and we also did that. And like a lot of things that we said was pretty amazing. But currently, the goals that we have is to reach 100,000 daily active users. That's like our goal. As well as we want to launch the pretty smooth multi-chain launch, as well as to have a the fully functional running mobile app as well, both on Android yeah. and iOS. So, uh, so that's like the <laughs> The, the next milestone for us. I'm uh, unbelievably excited for the mobile game, especially from the announcement that was like yesterday or whatever. It's going to be uh, using the same NFTs, but it's sort of a, a building, build up, uh, you know, progressive sort of game. Uh, <laughs> super excited. Um, if you could go back in time and change one thing, what would it be? Mm, that's a tricky question. I, I would have done a lot of things differently, to be honest. Uh, but the the main main part I would be uh, I guess would be the fundraising thing, because uh, yeah I would just change the the, the the structure how we actually did the first fundraising round I would uh, I have learned a lot since then and I would just it would just help us so so much in the future on the on the maintaining on the like on the like market side the market making side on the token price and everything so the one thing I would change is, is just the cap table I guess and just pre ranch some pieces, um, how we allocated some, some funds to the different investors. And I believe that that would be like the number one thing I would do. Okay. And kind of a similar question, but as opposed to being an event or something you could do, if you could go back in time and give your past self some advice, uh, some words of encouragement, uh, some, some tip that, you know, kind of would, would sail you to success, what would that be? Yeah, I guess like I would just really would have appreciated myself a lot. Like uh, at that time, I was really actually telling myself that we're doing enough. I would just really tell that, tell him that uh, you are on the right path and like the building is the way for sure. But the, the, the number one thing I would really tell about regards to the file and to myself is that uh, do not really focus on the the flippers and like the people who are just here to make money, but actually focus on the building the real game that uh, the gamers will love to play so we have been focusing a lot on the people who like how these people will react how these people will uh, sell or buy DFL and we've been seeing a lot at the, the last year but like then we realized that the people who mattered the most for us for default and for everyone in here is that people who actually play the game like we had a lot of community members who we thought we were community members, but they had not even played the game once. <laughs> and then once we found out that, I, I was it was pretty pretty shocking to me. And then like for last several months, if you have noticed, like we are mainly focused on the game, we are mainly focused on the utility and like making the game really actually fun. And once if we were we haven't focused fully this way at the beginning, I believe the game would have been way way more far. But uh, we have a time, we have a fun, and we have the runway, and I believe we're gonna be making a lot of amazing things together with our community for sure. Yeah, no, I think you've said that a couple of times, that more focus on the gameplay, the enjoyment of the game, having something that I like to do as opposed to what what ROI am I going to get out? You know, you, and like you said, the vultures are always going to be, you know, flying around, circling, right? So <laughs> they're looking for their quick buck, right? And no, I, I agree. The DeFi land definitely does set itself apart as being one of those type of games that is, is more fun to play as opposed to uh, I'm just, you know, seeing how much I can get out of it and then I'm gone. There's constantly updates on it that are they're keeping me interested. You know, I'm, I'm always playing it. I'm, I'm kind of like feeling like I can't play other games now just because I, I won't get to play DeFi land in the short period of time. I'm a dad, you know, that I get to play every single day uh so super exciting uh super exciting for what's to come for DeFi land constantly hearing all the announcements and things and uh you know my jaw drops pretty much every time uh great times with the community on discord and the general chat lots of good folks there um and i, I really appreciate you taking the time here to talk to me today and uh and, and answer these questions here on my channel um definitely going to be uh following DeFi land for a long time and uh looking forward to seeing you know what's what's going to come and i'm sure we'll we'll hit the moon here with this project 
awesome. I, I really appreciate that. And uh, can I, uh, the question yesterday too was amazing. Uh, it was pretty pretty awesome to talk with you. And, uh, well, the one thing I want to say is that the, the community is the number one thing for us. And we are, uh, we're not going to be building for our audience and our reach, like who are just liking our Twitters and stuff. We're going to be building for the community who are actually engaging and playing the default land. So uh, that's awesome. There are a lot of amazing stuff to happen, uh, a lot of things to come, like PvP, the racing game, the mobile, like a lot of, lot of things. And uh, I, as, as people will be enjoying as people will be using the game, I believe it's going to be getting more and more fun. And together we're going to be, at some point, the, the price and the people are going to appreciate the old stuff that we do. And the market gonna be uh, market gonna be also uh, appreciating the uh, and we're gonna be seeing some good price action for sure. I believe that for sure. Totally agree. Can't wait. Thanks so much, Erwin. Appreciate you joining me today. Cheers. Have an amazing day. Cheers. Hey guys, I'm DFL Misha, one of the game devs in DeFi Land. Happy to be here. Good morning. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Grisha. Good morning. Hi everyone, I'm Dieter, lead 3D artist here at DeFi Land, and I hope you all have a great day. Uh, hello, this is Levi. I hope everyone is having a great day. Hey there, this is Zeke. Hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers.